Hi, Movie Recaps here. Today, I will show you a horror, thriller, sci-fi film from 2015 titled The Resort. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In a world recovering from a zombie pandemic that led to 2 billion deaths, there is a facility called The Resort, which offers a luxury vacation and a special park where guests can shoot the world's remaining zombies for sport. Its CEO, Valerie Wilton, is the target of constant controversy and protest because of the potential outbreak her resort could cause, especially since the place is right next to the camps run by Hope For You, a charity organization. Our protagonist is Melanie Gibbs, a young woman who is currently going to meetings with an outbreak survivor support group to cope with her father's death. Someone in this group shares their experience with the resort and vouch for it, so now Melanie wants to visit it too. She shares the idea with her boyfriend and former soldier, Lewis Evans, who is surprised at first but still agrees to go with her. A few days later, they arrive at the resort's lounge, where we meet the rest of the guests. There is a group of middle-aged businessmen, Jack and Alfie, two gamer teenagers, and Sadie, a young woman whose fiancé didn't show up for the wedding. While they wait for the boats to be ready, Melanie and Lewis see a little girl through the window who belongs to the refugee camp. Melanie still can't believe there's such a problem. They reach the island by boat, then they ride in jeeps to get to the resort itself. Getting in the cars with them is the last guest, Archer, a quiet veteran. After being shown around the facilities, the group is taken to orientation, which entails a shooting range. Alfie and Jack shoot as if it was a video game, but Melanie has never shot a weapon before, so Lewis teaches her. When night falls, all guests are invited to a party by the swimming pool, where Valerie shows up to give a welcome speech while a chained zombie stands behind her. Archer doesn't stay to hear the speech, though, because he notices Sadie sneaking out and decides to follow her. He sees her breaking into a control room, where Sadie accesses the security system and downloads some information on a USB stick. The next morning, Melanie sees the zombie from the party being dragged out of the main building, which starts affecting her opinion of them. Meanwhile, the result engineers find three corrupt files in the system but are afraid to tell Valerie, so they decide to clean them themselves without raising alarm. They are taken back to the jeeps and assigned guides. Our group will be in the hands of Tom Nevins. On their way out, Melanie sees the zombies kept in cages like animals. An alarm starts ringing in the building where one of the corrupt files acts up, but the engineer quickly takes care of it. The guide shows a guest how the park is divided into different areas that are separated by fences that stop the zombies from hurting too much. They also remind the guests of the rules. Rule number one, it is the zombies bite that transmit the virus, not their blood. Rule number two, the fresher they are, the faster they are. And rule number three, only a shot to the head will kill them. The businessmen are taken to a special building where zombies appear restrained in place on doors and windows, so they shoot them face to face. Melanie and the others are taken to the top of a cliff, where they can shoot them from a safe distance. Sadie decides not to participate for now, while Jack and Alfie's shooting is erratic and mostly misses their targets. Lewis and Archer, as former soldiers, hit the heads every time. When Melanie's turn comes, she doesn't dare to do it because she is sure the zombie she is aiming at looks at her. As darkness starts to fall, the groups makes it to the spot where they will be camping for the night. Tents have already been set up for them. Melanie is starting to regret coming because she cannot bring herself to kill a zombie. Lewis asks her to give the place a chance. Sadie is first approached by Archer, who wonders why she didn't participate. She says this was more of her ex-fiance's kind of activity. Then she is approached by Jack and Alfie, who keep hitting on her and try to impress her with their gaming achievements, but she ignores them by entering her tent. At headquarters, the system issues haven't been solved yet, so Valerie orders a full diagnosis. The engineer finds out that there was an unauthorized access of the system the previous night. This stranger downloaded a lot of data, but also left something behind. Valerie is about to call security when the system starts failing. The engineer manages to get it under control, but only for a few seconds before it fails again. Thanks to this computer failure, zombies all over the resort are released from their restraints in cages. They attack the people at the hotel and swimming pool. They also get to the businessmen and their guide. The system is unsalvageable, so the engineer tries to escape the control room, but the zombies quickly arrive there as well and attack all employees, killing them or infecting them. The zombie that had been at the welcome party recognizes Valerie and goes after her, so she runs into her office and seals the door behind her. The security system goes offline after repeated failed attempts to reboot itself, so the brimstone protocol is activated. This means the place will be bombed in a few hours. At camp, Sadie and Melanie can't sleep, so they share a drink and discuss the possible lack of ethics behind the resort. Their chat is interrupted by the sudden presence of a zombie approaching them, so Melanie goes to wake everyone up while Sadie aims her gun at it. She doesn't dare to shoot, but luckily Archer steps in and kills it for her. Nevins is worried about this turn of events because the fence are supposed to keep the zombies from coming too close, so he turns on the jeep's lights to take a better look at their surroundings. They discover a horde of zombies is coming, so the girls run to hide behind a tent while the men defend the camp. Nevins gets in the jeep and tries to contact headquarters, but the only answer he gets is a recording telling him of the activation of the brimstone protocol. As he tries to start the car with no luck, Archer runs out of ammo. 
Melanie runs into a tent to get him a magazine and is jumped on by a zombie, but Sadie pushes it off and helps Melanie reach the jeep, tossing the magazine to Archer on their way. Nevins is jumped on too when he gets out of the car, but he also pushes the zombie off and climbs on the top of the jeep with the other guests. Only Alfie is missing, but when he tries to join them, the zombies get to him and kill him. Archer tells everyone to hold their fire when the final zombie is taken care of. The group spends a night on top of the jeep. As soon as the sun starts to rise, Archer does a recon of the area and decides it is safe enough for them to come down. Lewis thinks they should wait to get rescued, but Nevins informs them that it won't happen because the whole park is down and the brimstone protocol has been activated. Archer wants to leave and try to catch a boat and Nevin thinks it is impossible for him to make it on time, but when Melanie mentions the possibility of a quicker road, Nevins retrieves a map of the park and finds a route that may help them save time. The group decides to follow Archer to the docks and before leaving, a morning jack covers Alfie's face with his jacket and takes his bracelet. While the group makes their way through the park, Melanie tries to comfort Lewis, who feels unsettled because of the current situation bringing back war memories. Sadie shows sympathy for Jack, trying to befriend him to make up for not getting off to the best start. As Archer keeps on guiding their steps, Lewis wonders who made him the leader, to which Archer replies they did when they decided to follow him. They are finally getting close to the fenced area when a zombie jumps on them. Nevins quickly kills it but gets upset when he discovers it was one of his fellow guides. He wonders how this could be happening when the security is supposed to be watertight. Jack says it must be a hacker's fault. It could come from the internet, but it most likely is an inside job, which makes Sadie realize this must be her fault. When they make it to the fence, they find a jeep has crashed into it and is blocking the door. To cross it, they must go in one at a time and squeeze their bodies between the jeep and the fence. Another horde of zombies suddenly appears, so Archer and Nevin stay a couple of steps behind to shoot them while the rest of the group crosses the fence. There is a zombie inside the wrecked jeep that suddenly wakes up and tries to bite Melanie, but Sadie kills it, giving Lewis the chance to take the gun that was inside the car and help with the defense. Archer and Nevins cross the fence after everyone has made it safely, but a zombie also manages to sneak in and bites Nevins. As he despairs, Melanie tells him it's gonna be okay, but Lewis steps in and shoots him in the head, angering Melanie with his actions. The group keeps going and eventually finds the building where the businessmen had their fun. Before getting inside, Archer makes Sadie confess what she has actually come to the park for. She explains she has downloaded some files to gather enough proof of unethical practices to close down the park and that she is working for Living 2, a group of undead rights activists. She thinks she just used some codes and encrypted data to get into the system, but Jack says she has been played and that whatever she used to download the data also uploaded something nasty to destroy the resort. Both he and Lewis blames her for everything, but Melanie stays sympathetic and promises her that they won't leave her behind. While looking for a safe way to enter the headquarters, the group walks into the abandoned buildings and find the bodies of the businessmen. They look through the windows and notice the zombies coming towards them rather fast because they are fresh victims. Melanie, Lewis, and Archie take a tunnel, but Sadie and Jack are not able to cross in time to join them before the zombies arrive, so they take the opposite direction and agree to meet at the exit. The trio comes out of the building without any trouble, and Lewis is eager to leave, but Melanie stops him and asks to wait for the other two. Sadie and Jack are being chased by zombies, so they try to cross an empty room, where one zombie is still restrained. They believe it to be dead and walk in front of it, but the zombie wakes up and bites Sadie. This makes her decide to sacrifice herself as a distraction for Jack to escape. She gives him her USB stick before he runs away, and the zombies take her. Jack rejoins the others while the zombies chase him, so they hurry and cross a fence into a secured area, closing the doors behind them. When Melanie asks about Sadie, Jack's only answer is to give her the USB stick. With an hour left for the bombing to start, the four of them finally enter the resort building and choose to go into a dark room because it's the only door they can open. Inside, there is blood on the floor and railings, similar to a cattle run which starts shaking when the presence of zombies comes near. The group runs through the railings and makes it to an oven room with piping hot walls and a fence at the end of it that Archer needs to force open. They leave the oven and enter a normal room, wondering what all this means when a zombie jumps off the ceiling and attacks Jack. Archer kills it, but it's too late. Jack has been bitten. Upset and crying, Melanie has to look away while Archer kills him too. They leave the room and walk into the infirmary surrounded by the Hope For You tents. They realize that the resort has been using the refugees to make more zombies, keeping them slow by aging them in the oven. There is suddenly movement behind a tent and the little girl Melanie saw when she arrived shows herself, but she is now a zombie. Another horde appears in front of them so they run back inside as the chase begins. Archer and Melanie keep the door closed with the weight of their bodies, but Lewis escapes by climbing a chain that fell from the hole that dropped a zombie on them earlier. Melanie can't believe he's left them, and Archer tells her to follow him while he holds onto the door. She accepts after some hesitation. After climbing up, she looks through the hole and finds Archer telling her to make sure to get Sadie's data exposed before he opens the door and jumps into the fray. There are only 15 minutes left before the bombing. Melanie runs across many hallways, and after retrieving a gun from a body on the floor, makes it to one of the resort's many luxury rooms, which is filled with bodies and zombies. Lewis suddenly shows up and closes a door behind them. 
Then he apologizes to Melanie for leaving her behind before showing her he has been bitten. Melanie aims her gun at him but can't bring herself to shoot him, so she hands him the gun and leaves him to do it himself. The horde of zombies breaks into the room then, so Melanie grabs another gun from a body and starts running again until she finds the control room. She's suddenly startled by a door opening and a hand dragging her inside a different room, but it's just Valerie bringing her into her office. Melanie calls her a monster for what she does. Valerie reminds her that Melanie paid for it before trying to take her gun. As the women fight over the weapon, the zombies hear the noise and breaks into the office. Some of them feed on Valerie, while the others chase Melanie as she runs out of the room. The countdown to the bombing reaches zero right before Melanie makes it outside. She continues to run as the zombies go after her and planes arrive to drop bombs all over the place. Luckily, she is fast enough to reach the edge of the cliff and jumps into the ocean before the entire island is blown off. Three weeks later, we learn investigators still don't know what caused the whole incident. Melanie has survived and now appears on TV, revealing all the information Sadie gathered. It turns out she isn't the only survivor though. Archer has also escaped and watches her proudly on the screen. As a news reporter comments on the latest developments of the resort case, a horde of zombies comes out of the sea at the resort's beach, ending the transmission. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.